over the word of God this morning and repeat this after me. This is the book of life. It is God speaking to me. His word and his will are one. It's only through him that I live, move, and have my being. Without his word, I am nothing. All his promises, all his promises in this book are yes and amen. No matter what this world says or does, my future, <laughs> my future is bright forever and ever because I trust in God who is one with this book. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you said that. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me begin by welcoming those of you that are um, with us by Facebook and all those other things. <laughs> I don't do Facebook, so I'm probably the only person in America that's not on Facebook. <laughs> Got two. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, the only one. <laughs> But we just welcome you. However you are uh, getting this uh, broadcast this morning, we just thank um, God for you. Thank you for those of you that continuously show up. Uh, it's, just, it's just something about being together physically. Yeah, I, I can see you on Zoom and all of those things, but um, there's just something that does not replace that personal contact. Even though it may be an elbow or a fist bump, it's just something that just... Just don't replace that. Amen. So as we begin this morning in the word, let's begin. I'll, I'll give you the scripture and then we'll we'll start off from here um, and see um, how we get through this this morning. Amen. Y'all pray for me here. <laughs> OK. All right. Let's go, if you would, to Second Corinthians. We're going to start there. Second Corinthians one. We're going to begin at verse 19. We're going to read down through 21. And I'm going to do it in several translations, but let's begin in the King James. And while she's getting that up, that up there, I will uh, just read it to you. Or if you have your devices, go ahead and pull it up in the King James. It says, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Savanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Verse 20, for all, of, all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. That's the King James. In the New Living Translation, it says, as surely as God, y'all listen at this, as surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For, verse 19, for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. Y'all see that? Okay. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy and I, talking about Paul, preached to you, and as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. Y'all hear that? He always does what he says. For all, verse 20, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. So all of the promises in Christ are yes. We say amen to that, which means we are in agreement. All right. That, and that, okay, let me calm down. That's the place where we've got to come. It's in agreement because he's already given us the promises. They're already yes. In Christ Jesus. And so all we do is simply come into agreement with what he said. All right, y'all with me, right? Okay. So now I can I can back up. Well, I was gonna do it in the um in the NIV. Um we'll, we we may do that later. Okay, so 
Y'all, but I thought that was really good in the New Living Translation. So, as I am, uh, I, I had already began to just, just, you know, in your daily um, things that you do as far as spending time with God in the Word and, you know, just during your day where you're thinking about God and just some different things come up. Um, but I was just, I had begun to look at some things. And uh, let me say this, that I guess I can give you a title. We're going to talk, we'll call this the promises of God. All right? We'll just call it the promises of God because basically that's where we're going to be centered. But um, I had this incident, and it's, y'all, and I know you that minister the word, there's just different ways that God gets stuff to you. So I was thinking yesterday, because I was like, okay, God, which way do you want me to go with this? I, I, I was like between two different um, messages or things that God had laid in my heart. So anyway, and I got to keep up with this time. Okay, so uh, I had a conversation on Thursday, maybe, Wednesday or Thursday this week. One of my daughters, uh, her baby was running a fever. And uh, she was almost in panic mode because when she called the doctor's office, um, they, uh, nobody picked up and they just said, okay, leave a message and we'll call you back, right? So anyway, she texted us um, and me and my other daughters, and one of my daughters is a nurse. And so she, um, she sent her back some information like, okay, just wait and da-da-da, this is what's going on probably. And uh, so when I was talking to the nurse the daughter that's the nurse, when I was talking to her later, she said, really, when they, because the information that she sent was just, it was like, wow, she, it, this looked like she know what she's talking about. So when I was talking to her about that, she said that she said, basically, when a parent um, calls in and they're, they, you know, wanting to know about a child, and she said, basically, what we do in the beginning is we talk them off the ledge. Y'all get that? She said, we have to talk them off the ledge because they're in such an uproar about, oh, my God, what is going on with my child? She said, so they have to give them some facts, some information, uh, basically like this, is, this may be happening, this may be, but what they're actually doing is calming that parent down and talking them off the, off the ledge. You ever seen a, a motion picture where somebody's uh, gone up on the building, they're getting ready to jump? And somebody will come to the woman and try to talk them back in. Well, basically, um, that's what she was talking about. And so for today, as I was just thinking about this, and God said to me, I I'm going to say it came up in my spirit, <laughs> that some of you that are listening today, you need to be talked off the ledge. Because people are just all over the place. And the other thing was, that if you are inundating yourself with things that are causing fear, you need to, you need to turn away from those. And you can pinpoint things, because I, I know, um, you can pinpoint things that you hear, and immediately what's happening, you start getting fearful. Now, everything, you ain't going to be able to turn off everything that you hear because people around you, you know. But I'm talking about things that on purpose we just feed ourselves on, and, and you, it's ministering fear to you and to such a point that you don't even want to move. Let me, let me help you with something. The Scripture says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if there is something that's coming at me, whether it is self-induced or I'm just kind of in an atmosphere and it just kind of slipped in there, if it is bringing fear, it is not of God. Therefore, I don't have to accept it. But what I need to do now, I've got to replace that and put my focus on something other than that that's bringing the fear. And y'all, really, this is a day-by-day day thing, really, because I'm telling you so much is going on around us until if you don't watch it, and God has had to tell me, okay, let's pull back. Come on. Come on back over here because you're too far over there. 
And there are sometimes when you just kind of flow into and you don't, you immediately, you don't identify the spirit of fear. But if you'll listen at the spirit of God, he'll let you know, uh-uh, come on back over here. At least that's what he's doing to me. Okay, all right. So that being said, next thing, that, the, way, the, the reason I got here, I, um, in my, um, in my um, time in the morning with the Lord, and I, I actually, I do this. Uh, because I am expecting results, right? So even though I'm spending time with God and I'm fellowshipping with him, there are some, there are some specific things that I do, all right? So uh, in the mornings, I have this list of scriptures that I, um, uh, I, I call them healing scriptures. And I, on purpose, every morning, every night, and if I can get them in there in my ear during the day, I'll do it. But I was looking, I was going down my scriptures this particular morning, and I got to this one. Y'all, I have read this. You, you, you ever been in a place, and I know you have, where you've read things, you've been in the Word, you've read things, and then all of a sudden you'll read it again, and there's something that jumps out at you. This is what got me that morning, okay? Let's go to it. All right. In Romans, let's go there. Romans four and we're going to start at verse 16 I'll read it um, down uh, I'm going to read from 16 down through 21 in the King James and then I want to go back on the specific verse that we're going to uh, zero in on and then I'll come back to that and we might look at that in a couple of other translations we all know this we've all heard this we were in, um, in um, um, when we were doing the Bible study, um, the, the three of us um, um, doing the Bible study, um, we kind of zeroed in a couple of times on Abraham. So everybody um, in the body, well, if you've been in the Word, you've heard about Abraham. We know the story of Abraham and of Sarah and, how, and the way that God worked with them, all right? But I was looking at this. Let's, well, we'll just read it. Let's start at verse 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, talking about Abraham, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He, verse 20, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now, when I got there, that verse 21 jumped out at me. I don't know if I had in previous time just paid so much attention to, you know, con him considering not his own body now dead. Because that, you know, sometimes we zero in on that, neither, the yet, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. But this particular mo uh, morning, what jumped out at me was he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. We got to get there. That what God has promised, what we see in this word, because it's in here, he is able to perform it. Now, when we think about Abram, Abraham, God changed his name to Abraham, and we go down through that story, you know, there were a couple of hiccups there made by them, and um, I, I like uh, what uh, Pastor uh, Larry and Pat are teaching about our righteous standing with God, our, 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 uh, our righteousness, because we are in Christ Jesus, we are in right standing with God, therefore I have the right to come boldly before the throne of grace, 
not crawling in there, but when, you, when, <laughs> when he says come boldly, that's not crawling in with, oh, dear, kind, heavenly Father, I'm just a worm in the dirt. I know I'm not uh, worthy. If you would just listen at me this one time, I promise I won't bother you no more. No, we walk in there by invitation, boldly, amen, and expectantly that I'm not going to come out the same way that I went in there. That whatever I'm going for, I'm going to get whatever I'm going for. Amen. And so we have to change, we got to change our mindset to the fact that, look, in Christ Jesus, and because we're in him, his promises are yes and amen. Yeah, they are. All right. Okay. So that just jumped out at what God promised he's able to perform. Look at, uh, let's run quickly to Acts 7. Acts 7, and because um, I want to I want to throw this in here before I go to these other translations. Acts 7 and verse uh, 5, and we you can do it in the King James. So I, I don't have that one written down. Okay. Look at this, y'all. And he gave him none, and he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Now, this is Stephen rehearsing what God had already told him. This is before they stoned him. So he's rehearsing, going all the way down through lineage. He gets to Abraham, and this is what he's saying. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession. Talking about God promising Abraham. Abraham, okay? He would give it to him for, for a possession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. See, this is the way God talks, okay? So he makes the promise to Abraham before any children ever showed up. Right? Okay. So at some point in time, between the time, and if you, oh, God. If you'll go back and look at um, the story, I, I tell y'all, go back and look at the story of Abraham because it is ju it's just good. So you can start in chapter, I think it's 12, Genesis 12, and just go all the way through um, and just look at the way that God dealt with him because there were a, there were a few times when God had to reiterate what he said. He didn't change it. He had to remind him of the promise. All right? And so at some point in time, Abraham became fully persuaded that, okay, if God promised it, he's able to perform it. Y'all, if God, anything that God has said to us, he's able to perform it. He is. Look at the impossibility of this situation right here. And then... God, <laughs> Abraham gets to be a hundred, but the promise didn't change. Now, look, if you're talking to dude 30, you know, wife uh, already was able to have children, okay? And then God makes this promise, like, okay, we'll just do the necessary physical part and then baby show up, right? But you get a man <laughs> that is a hundred. <laughs> and a woman, not that had previous children, her womb was dead, she was unable to produce children. And then God steps in and makes a promise. Him. And see, this is the thing about it. Sometimes when we see things in the word of God and, and the way that God spoke to them, they in their um, natural thinking couldn't figure out how he was going to do it, right? So they try to help him out some, thinking surely this is the way he's going to do it. Look, if we will stay with the promise long enough, we need to get out of, let me figure out how is he going to do this. You don't know. 
Because he got all, we, look, we, we're dealing with the creator of the universe. If you believe him. If you believe that there is a God. We're talking about the creator of the universe. If you will just look at your physical, I know I'm all over the place. Your physical body, the way that our f- physical bodies operate, it's amazing. Simply amazing that you started out as a seed. Yeah, it's amazing that you get here in this little bundle, (laughs) this little tiny thing, yet when you get here, you got everything that you're going to need when you get to be 50. (laughs) It, <laughs> it just has to mature. It just has to grow, right? So we're talking about the awesomeness of God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can even ask or think. All right. Okay, so y'all still with me, right? Okay. Um, I said I was going to read... Um, Verse 21 in a couple of other translations. Let me find them. Okay. Verse um, 20, and Leela, if you can't get these as quick as I'm, I'm saying them, don't, don't worry about it because I'll read it. And you can go back later on and read them. In the Amplified, verse 20 of Romans 4 says, but he did not w- doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised. Now, as I was thinking on this one day, what came up in me was the fact that if I will stay with the promise long enough, y'all, I am not trying to generate on my own faith. I'm not trying to generate on my own confidence. But it's built into the promise. It's built in there. So that if I'll stay with it long, y'all ever been with the word long enough and you just was like, yeah, it's a done deal. I can do this. I can do it because he said I can do it. And there's a confidence that comes. And the confidence didn't come because, uh, you know, I just like, confident, I got to have com- confidence. Come on, confidence, confidence. It's built into it. I, it's amazing to me the way God has done this thing. And if we, but we got to stay with it. We've got to, um, there was a, a lady that was, um, she was um, giving her testimony about being healed. And she would go through the scriptures and she said she'd do this because um, uh, her dad told her, look, if you don't get up from there, you're going to die. She said he didn't, he, he just, he just point blank told her, you need to get up. So she began to go into the word, get her scriptures, and she'd do her scriptures. And she said, I think they had given her like 30 days to live. On day 29, she says, and then she said, she said, something rose up in me, and her dad was sitting on the side of her. He said, Faith kicked in. But see, it was, it was the only thing she did was stay with the promises of God. And at some point, it's going to boil over or roll over or come out the cup. Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can feel something to the top. And then you put a couple of more drops in there and it just overflow. Yeah. So what I was saying is that we don't have to like, ooh, I got to get some come. No, if we'll just stay with it. It's going to rise up. I've, I've, I've been so disappointed in sometimes, and it's just like with, with things and, and stuff and folk, and I'll get in that word because it looks like at some point in time, it looks to me like, like almost like they were saying all hope is gone. When Paul and them was in that thing, and, and sometimes you might feel like that because you're just inundated with so much stuff. But I'm telling you, when you pull back over in this word, 
You might not even feel like listening at the word or looking at, just put it in your ear. And I'm telling you, from experience, it'll change your mood. It'll change that, that, that feeling of desperation, that feeling of woe is me, that feeling of how we going to ever come out of this. It will change that. Yeah, it'll change it in you, yet the circumstance might still be looking the same way. It'll do it. Hallelujah. Glory. And so, let me calm down. <laughs> And so, um, in the New Living Translation, in verse 20, it says, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promised him. Now, y'all, when we look at the story of Abraham, and we come to this point, and it says that he never wavered, when you look at the story, it looked like he did, doesn't it? All they really were doing were trying to help God out in some areas. Okay? All right. Now, the next one that jumped out at me this particular morning, let's go to Sarah. Because we, we, we hear a lot about Abraham, you know. Um, oh, and by the way, this, uh, him taking what was promised, and knowing that God was able to perform it, he had to do that by faith. Y'all know that, right? Amen. By faith. Because all of this was going on even in Acts, it says that before a child even showed up. All right? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And let's look at verse 11. This is the other thing that, that it just jumped out at me. Hallelujah. Okay. It says, and I'm, I'm, this one I'm reading out of the um, King James. It says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. So it wasn't just on Abraham's part. God also had to do something in Sarah, right? Okay. So, she, by faith, through faith, she, she received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age in the natural because she judged him faithful who had promised. Abraham came fully persuaded that God would do whatever he said he could do, he was able to do that. Sarah became to, uh, came to the point where she judged God faithful. She judged God faithful because they had gotten themselves in some different situations and God brought them out of them. So she judged him faithful in this area, that God is faithful to do what he said. All right, glory to God. In the Amplified, it says, by faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to receive a child, conceive a child, even when she was long past the normal age for it, because she considered him who had given her the promise to be reliable and true to his word. We got to get to that. If we are not at that place, just hang with the word longer. If you're not at that place, I, we are, I'm not saying you can't get to that place. What I'm saying is you got to change your focus. And we got to become fully focused. And, and this thing has been, um, it's been ringing in my heart ever since uh, Pastor uh, Larry Nim began to teach this thing. And that is this thing about relationship with God. Because you are never going to be fully persuaded by going on my relationship with God. Because I can tell you some things that God did for me. You can get excited about it. But until you get into that place yourself, I don't care what nobody say. You aren't going to experience. See, that's why God and his promises, they for all of us. Yes and amen. So you can't say, no, God, you left me out of this. No, he didn't. 
It's just the fact that some of us have said amen to them, and other of us, like, we're just hanging around. We're just hanging. <laughs> Trying to get a little bit off somebody else's testimony or, look, y'all, this one-on-one. -on -one. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. And you can have it. Because he says all of the promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh my God. Let me, because um, my time is just about out. Let me, let me end with this. We, need to settle in our hearts that God is faithful. And you know what? <laughs> Faithfulness, and I didn't give y'all any definitions of anything, did I? <laughs> you may look at other people around you to try, um, and, and that's your only um, that's your only um, probably evidence of the only thing you can see uh, concerning faithfulness. Because people promise stuff all the time. And they renege, change their mind, back off. But God is not like that. God is faithful. I wanted to give you a scripture. Okay, let's do this. I'll run through these. Y'all go back and look at them later. Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Talking about God. He's faithful that promise. Um, faithfulness is actually a fruit of the spirit. So we have the capacity to be faithful. But we got we to gotta let these things out of us, y'all. They're in there, but we got to let them out of us. Number one, we got to be convinced that they're in us. But don't ever think that God isn't faithful. He gave promise that I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. We've always needed to hold to that, but I'm talking about in this day and time, you really need to know that. He said it. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. People will leave you. <laughs> They'll forsake you. And if you're going to base God on that, you're going to be in trouble. We got to look to him. He'll never leave us, and he'll never forsake us. Even in our mess, y'all, when we done just went opposite of what he told us to do, he is forever trying to get our attention. Now you tell me God ain't good. Never leave me. Never forsake me. So in your lowest morning, your, look, your lowest point of whatever's going on around you and everything look like it's just going, you, it ain't going to happen. And you got to tell yourself, I thank you, Father. You never leave me and you never forsake me. And I'm staying with you. Because where else we going to go? There is nothing that is solid in this world. Nothing. It'll change like that. But God. God is faithful. If he said it yesterday, it's good today. The scripture says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We got to hold to that. I ain't talking about playing, y'all. I'm talking about holding to it. I'm talking about in the midst of stuff, we holding to it. I'm talking about when everybody around you talking foolishness. We as believers need to be talking people off the ledge. Yeah. This is a perfect opportunity to let them know who my God is, who I serve, who I believe, what he has done for me. He'll do the same for you. Hallelujah. 
Now, everything that we've said today is for those who are in Christ. The promises of God in, 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 <laughs> in him are yes and amen. But if you are outside of him, you don't have to stay there. Because he's already given you the invitation to come. He said, whosoever will, let him come. You and that y'all, y'all better be listening at these messages that are going forth on Tuesday nights. Because you don't have to get your ducks in a row. When, when I came to God, when none of my ducks in a row. I was all over the place. <laughs> Had a praying mama brought up in the church and in foolishness. But God. Once I made the decision. Man, I'm tired of all this. Ah, oh, God, I got to have you. And once that decision is made, you come on into Christ Jesus. All of the promises in him are yes and amen. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Thank you, Father, for helping us to see, helping us to know, and helping us to understand. We give you praise for that word, Father. For some of us, it was seeding for others watering, but we thank you for the word that we heard, the word that we receive, and the word that we practice. We have made the decision, Father. We're staying with you. We trust you because we believe that you are able to do what you promised and that you are faithful to anything that you've said. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. That last portion of that was really for those of you who have not made Jesus and received him as the Lord of your life. He has already done everything for you. All we do at this point is receive. And so we invite you, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead, you are right in the right place to just receive. And all you have to do is simply receive. Okay? Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, he just cried out, Lord. Amen. And so you just receive him as your Lord. Based on what you believe according to the word. So let's just pray that. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want to come uh, and be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, you want all of the promises that we have in Christ Jesus, come on and pray this after me. Say, God, your word says if that if I will believe in my heart and confess with my mouth Jesus as Lord and that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I make that confession now. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you were raised from the dead, that you took upon yourself my sin, and I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And so if you, if you made that confession today, we want to invite you to go to our website. There are some um, specific things out there that will help you get into the word. Uh, I encourage you, just, just begin to, if you don't have a Bible, get you a Bible. You can go on the internet. You can go on uh, BibleWay.com. It's just so many ways that you can get the word. And I just encourage you, just begin in the Gospels and just, just, just read. Just let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys for um, visiting us today. Oh, let me not forget offering. <laughs> You're listening today. Um, if you are not a member of a local church, number one, we invite you get into a local church. You need that fellowship. I know we're doing things a little different now, um, but according to scripture, God says that he'll give you pastors after his heart that will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. You need to get under somebody. 
I know you, you all that, but you still need to be under somebody. And so we invite you to do that. If you don't have a church home, we invite you here to Newness of Life World Outreach Center. Um, and we ask you, um, if you want to give into the ministry, we will receive. Amen. If you are uh, listening and you are a member of another uh, congregation, your time, go to your local congregation, your local church. Um, but if you want to do offerings to us, we will receive. Amen. And so we thank you for joining us today. And as we leave today, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.